with your permission because we don't want the. Um... Okay, I feel better now, so I'm relieved. <laughs> Maybe um, everyone's sitting so. That's someone took that lock over there. Huh? Someone took that lock over there. Take it back. Right. <laughs> Just, uh, I didn't want to let the you know, the Hanukkah go by without a couple of uh, um, Rabsadic thoughts, which really does tie into what uh, we're learning, because Sadna Darach Hadu is all one derech. But uh, I was considering the following: that one of the um, one of the things that the Greeks did was they ordered the translation of the Torah, the Septuagint. Shivim Zekenim, they made Shivim Zekenim, Talmai HaMelech, which was early in the, uh, in the Greek era, almost at the time of Shimon Atzadeh, right after Alexander the Great, was Talmoy. And he ordered the translation of the Torah, which is not that much different than what Art Scroll does, or Feldheim, or Mosaic Compress. <laughs> Translation of the Torah. That's a bad thing. But the Gemara says that um, that the, the day that they translated the Torah and handed it over to uh, to the Greeks was Kiyoim Shinasabai Ha'egel. That's pretty bad. <coughs> Chazal, Chazal at that time, and that's who it was, it was Chazal, it was the, the Tanoim, looked at the translation of the Torah as the day that we made the Egel. So I was trying to understand what happened on the day that we made the Egel, that's like the day that we translated the Torah. So, um, Sam Seifer says, doesn't answer this question, but he says something very insightful. And he said that, he says that when we translate the Torah into English or Greek or whatever it might be, which is ostensibly a good thing in terms of spreading the, spreading the word, teaching the word, you know, um, what you lose there in the translation is, more than anything else, is the Torah Shabal Peh. Meaning, you can't do a gematria any longer once it's in Greek. You, you can't do a Ramaz, you can't do a, uh, even, even a, uh, a Mamatzin or a Binyanov or a Zereshava doesn't work very well in English. Try it. It, it doesn't work. Today that we're translating the Torah is to make it better, easier for us to, um, to understand and comprehend the Torah. That's a different case lasser slash M Hyperitary Sefa. But the and it was translated already. But the day that it was translated was not so much that now the the Goyim have access to the Torah which we're so possessive about. Our Torah Bishbata Ba Yido, <coughs> it's not so much that says the Chassam Sefer, it's more that we really gave away, we, we, we gave away the chashivas and really the of Torah Shabbat Peh. That's really what was lost in it. And it was actually the official founding of the Sadukim. The Sadducees in our history, you know, the, the Seder Adaris writes, um, Nafkin, his passage of the Ajak Nesagdola, Shem Natsadak Hayim Mishiorik Nesagdola, went over this once in the Pirkei Avosh here. The, the Seder Adaris writes that Hatsadukim, Habaitusim, Hakroyim, Vahaloitzrim. So he writes, Kulam Chadi. It's, it's all one. And, and the one is that one that, that, that uh, unites them all, if you will is that, look, what Hashem said, He said, and what it says in the Torah, it says, they're not talking out of a lack of emunah. But the Kodesh Baruch who gave us, He gave us, the Torah Shema Peh, okay, it's established, you know. This is their, their, um, I remember, as, uh, I have a, a, a very interesting memory of it, I think I was 13 years old, and I was on Cody Allen Avenue in uh, Brooklyn, and there was a group of missionaries standing on the corner, I don't know if you see this so much anymore, but, uh, the good old days of the missionaries. <laughs> they were standing out the corner, um, fighting with a group of yeshiva bacher from Mir, Tarabadas, and, uh, and Lubavitch. <laughs> that was the gathering in front of the bakery 
on Coney Island Avenue and Avenue High. Um, and the yeshiva bacher, the, the, the argument of the yeshiva bacher, the yeshiva team, was led by Rav Herschel Schechter, who was the, the under she was a YU, he was a gum. And, and, but he wasn't, at that time, he was, I don't even want to say how many years ago, <laughs> it, was a long, it was a long time ago. It was a gun, and he was, he was, um, I can remember it like yesterday, I just remember like um, anything they would say in Tanakh or in, in anything that they would say, he, he, had it, he had it like so clear, you know, all the psukim and everything. And, and everybody has argued, but I, but I, I just remember that, that uh, moment that I remember. Um, it was just very beautiful. I was like very proud to be a Jew at that moment, standing next to a commercial chef. I always tell them this when I, when I see it. But uh, I remember the, the, um, the uh, what sticks in my mind is that the, the, the Goyim were, and they were, what they were after was the, uh, really was the Russians that, that were moving into that area and giving them food and all that. But uh, what there, what, every time something came up that the Gemara says this or the, the Rabbanim said this, the, the attitude was, well, I mean, the, the rabbis, okay, they made, up, they made up stuff. We're talking, we're talking Torah. We're talking Torah, we're talking Bible. They do their Bible, or at least they do the things they're quoting in the, in the, in the Bible. But they, they, there was a complete, um, there was Tzedukim. Basically, Tzedukim, Baitusim, Keroyim, Neutzerim. It's all the same idea of the lack of appreciation for Torah Shabbat. Okay, so, some Sefer says that's what happened with the translation of the Torah. It wasn't that we gave away something that the, the, so eventually somebody in would have come along and translated it, but that's not the point. The point was we, we, we said that this is it and there's, some, there's nothing more to it. That was the statement that we gave over. The, the, the uh, Mentor Shravo says, and I believe the Gemara says that this and Shabbos also uh, uh, something similar, that the Luchos Rishonites that HaKadosh Baruch Hu gave to Klai Yisrael, they, they somehow had in it the Torah Shabbat Shabbat and the Torah Shabbat Shabbat. As I recall, the Or Gedalia on um, Shavuos, sort of Gedalia, Shor Dor Shiva, Tarb Dase, Fitzadik, Lebracha, um, has a, a, a beautiful um, essay on exactly this, that the difference between the Luchais Rishonais and the Luchais Shniais was that the Luchais Rishonais were Kailo somehow the, the Torah Shabbat. I don't know what exactly that means, but it, somehow it was there. You read the Luchais Risharnas and you knew, you knew Abayah Barov. It was, it was, it was there. When the Torah, the Luchais Shniyos that we ended up with, um, all the way through the Bayis Rishon, etc., were, were, um, were just Luchais. It was Torah Shabbat without Torah Shabbat Pat. And, and, and what caused the breaking? Of the Luchais Rishainais, Egel Hazav. So, Nir Ali, if I could offer a Svara, that Chazal say that the Yoim Shatir Gamos Hatar Yavanis, that on the day that they translated the Torah to Yavanis, was the same thing as the day that they made the Egel. It was, it was a Shavira and a Bittel of the Torah Shabal Peh. Um, and, a, and a sort of a triumph, if you will, to the, to the uh, tzedukim of the chashivas of Torah Shabbat is a standalone version of the Torah without its peerage of Torah Shabbat. So why do they do it? Mask him to the bar. That's the pshat. In the, I, think, I think that's the pshat in the, uh, in the Gemara. Kiyayim Shit, and that's the way they go. It was a bit of the Torah Shabbat. Why did they do it? Who? They're going to get killed. That was, a, that was the only reason. Yeah, law. The, the Zohar says about um, that the Shem Hashem is Elohim, is Ela Mi. Ela is made up of Ela and Mi, meaning this is we, this is what we see, but then there's a Mi, there's you know, quite a question of where something's behind it, as, a, as opposed to by the Ela, Ela Elokech, Ela Elokech, Ela Elokech, Ela Elokech, Ela without the Mi, this is it, this is all there is to it. Wow. Okay. So let, let's. Um, let, so to get it a little bit clearer, or just the, the concept a little bit clearer, I think here's, here's, here's the, um, the history of the Kabbalah as it happened. Uh, there, there's a few, I think, I think we know a lot of this with a couple of mistakes. I just want to tweak it to get it right. 
the, the termination of prophecy was exactly in the year, Seder, Seder Elam says, uh, 3448. Prophecy, meaning Hashem speaks to people, uh, was, was an, almost an exact, if not exact, uh, I think almost exact, um, 1,000 year proposition because Harsinai was 2448 and the cessation of prophecy was 3448. If you count the Nevoa that, uh, you know, that Avram, Yitzhak, and Yaakov, and, but I'm talking about Nevoa to the Jewish people as a whole, like Nevoa for the, for the masses, so it was a thousand year deal from 2448 to 3448. 3448 um, must have been a shocking year, right? We're no more Nevoa. Um, was the self of the Ansheik Nessus Hagdola. You, you know that there's the historical tumult as to how long exactly was the time of the Ansheik Nessus Hagdola, but um, we know Mordechai was in the Ansheik Nessus Hagdola, and he was during the, uh, obviously during the Persian Empire, and Shimon Atzadik, Haya Mishiyare Knesset Hagdola, he was the end of the uh, Knesset Hagdola. At the end of the Knesset Hagdola, and this is the tweak I want to offer, at the end of the Knesset Hagdola was the beginning of Torah Shabbat Peh as we know it. Because as long as there was an Anshe Knesset Hagdola, we were still, there, yes, there was, what was the Anshe Knesset Hagdola committee, which lasted, let's say, 150 years. There, there, was, there was a committee of, of Tzadikim and Gaonim and Bali Masora, and the Vim, which came together to organize um, Judaism and create it into something as we know it today. Meaning, they, they put together the Siddur, Shemun uh, the calendar, Kriya Satira, um, all, all of the, all of the, what's Pashatas in, in Yiddishkeit, really was, not that it wasn't there before, it was there before, but it, it, during Golos it got mixed up. And the Atchik Nesset Agdola, together with the Vim, and this is the main point, were able to reconstruct the the, um, the the Torah and Yiddishkeit. Yiddishkeit. Judaism became like a religion, and that was all done through Nevoa. Yeah. So it's important to to understand that although the Anshe Knesset Hagdola is usually uh, credited with being the fathers of Torah Shemot like Ezra, um, love to you because it was really with the end of the Ansheik Nessus Agdola that we were became completely reliant on Tar Shabal Pet, which I will explain what that means. But it's really at the end of that because it was really with the with this termination of Navua that that uh, that Tar Shabal Pet started. So if you look where does uh, let's say Pirkei Avos, which starts off with the Messiah of Tar Shabal Pet, Ansheik Yibol Tar Bishida Masir Lishu Yishu Lishu Shiva That's on it. That's where it really all begins. It's on Kedekaf, the Lushan of the Ramban is the Shimon Atzadik right there in the Mishnah. Shimon Atzadik was the father of, of Torah Shebaal Peh, which is usually understood as, all right, Bishiyare Knesset Agdola, you have this whole Masorah of the Anshe Knesset Agdola that was all in his hands, but let's understand that even more, um, what this Ramban is saying is that we, there was a paradigm shift in the in the development of, of Klai Yisrael, um, which took place at the time of Shimon Atzadik, and we went from Ter Shibiksav to Ter Shibal to Ter Shibal Peh. Not, of course, pushing away Ter Shibiksav, but Ter Shibal Peh, again, as we know it today. This, um, the, 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 the termination of Nevua happened, according to Chazal, when Alexander the Great walked into the base of Mikdash. This was a great political achievement for the Jewish people because um, Alexander the Great was um, conquering the world and culturing the world. He was an Aristotelian and with, with the Chachma, his, his mission 
was ostensibly a kind mission. It wasn't that he was a, uh, a sort of a vicious king. He might have been, but he was. I think. I mean, he might have been a manovel. I don't. I don't know that much about him. But um, what what seems to be what seems to be clear is that his mission was to create a new world order. And by going, and it was it was necessary because uh, he was going into nations of barbarians and cannibals and and a lot of choshech. So the 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 yavan, the yavan uh, was really uh, putting this, you know, putting forth a lot of ore into the world and culturing everybody. Um, now we know, Chazal tell us that Shimon Tzadik, Alexander the Great, <coughs> like the big challenge for him would have been coming into Eretz Yisrael. <coughs> the reason for it, that was is because we were mostly Jews here at that time, and. And we were not cannibals, and we were not uh, we we were not barbarians, and we were not uh, even wife beaters, or or we were gentle people with a code, with with laws, with a system. We, we were we were good people. We were good people. We had our problems, but basically we were, we were good people, um, and we didn't have to be Greeks. So it was a, a unique challenge for the for the uh, Alexander the Great. How do you culture those that are more cultured than you? So what was important everywhere? was not necessarily important in Eretz Yisrael, yet um, I dare say uh, that uh, they had what to offer the Jewish people too. There, there, were, there were certain Chachmas, but the, the Rambam was almost, Baruch was almost a Pirish on Aristotle. <laughs> it's not, a, it, it, it's, it's not um, the Pasa Shulchan of the Gra tells us that the uh, the, the Sheva Kanim of the Menorah are connected to the Sheva Chach, seven Chachmas of the world. It means uh, mathematics and music and, and seven Chachmas of the world. I don't even know what they're called, let alone what the what the, 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 the Gra knew. Every one of these Chachmas. It was a Bucky in every one of the Chachmas. If you look at the Hagdama to the Chasa Shulchan, um, elaborate, uh, elaborates on, on what, he, what he heard the Talmud of the Gra what he heard from the Vilna Gon about the seven Chachmas and how they, uh, the Gra wrote a, uh, a Pirish on Euclidean geometry, it's, it's, uh, which, which we have. So the Yavadim had what to offer the, the B'nai Yisrael. There's, this is not the point. The point is that um, with, this, with this meeting that uh, we didn't know whether we were going to become another um, Greek province and have a Greek occupation and, and have to fight for our survival, um, physical survival, like we did in the time of uh, in Persia. We thought it was going to be the same thing in Eretz Yisrael. Shimna Tzadik, who was a Tzadik, Shimna Tzadik, the Kahuna with his Talmidim and with the Pirafei Kahuna went to meet Alexander the Great and hoped for a uh, summit meeting in Apitra, Ap, 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 Apipatris, which we know exactly where that is. This is where they met. The, uh, Chachmei Alexander, the Alexander, the great people coming up from the Negev and coming from Yerushalayim. And as is famous in Chazal that uh, Alexander the Great, for the first time in his life, um, got off of his horse, his high horse, and, and bowed down to Shimon HaTzadik, to the astonishment of the uh, Greek army. And he explained that, uh, he see, he, this is a man, Shimon HaTzadik, he saw dreams over and over again, and he sees him as the, as the reason, so Alexander the Great said, as the reason why I'm so successful at winning the wars that I win. It's this koach, like a malach, that holech uh, lefanecha, this was the, the vision of Shimon It's a very deep, you uh, know, leit malachim bashamayim. It was a very deep nevuah, but uh, I just put that aside for a second, I just want to stick with my history for a second. It was at that time that, that the Greeks laid down their weapons, and Shimon Atzadik took Alexander the Great and brought him to Yerushalayim and showed him the Beis Hamikdash and showed him the, um, according to many Midrashim, showed him the children learning and showed them the, the Chesed that we had in Eretz Yisrael and, and how how we put together this country so quickly after um, coming back as as uh, returnees and, and those refugees from a, from a, from a Gullus and after assimilation how. We're putting it together, and Alexander the Great was very um, was, was very uh, taken with it, and he, he and he brought him into the base of Mikdash and showed him the base of Mikdash. 
uh, at, at that moment, Chazal tell us, Kol Nevuah me Yisrael. Nevuah stopped. That was in 34-48. Nevuah stopped. So, what a day, right? So, on the one hand, like, we achieved peace. This is, like, not land for peace, but prophecy for peace. <laughs> we achieved peace. We achieved the ability to live as Jews in Eretz Yisrael. Um, but it was at the expense of Nevoah. Now, you can learn, and I'm sure it's true, that there was a certain Tummah that uh, came into the uh, Beis HaMikdash and thus caused the the cessation of, of, of Nevoah, but the, 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 the Bavlim also came into the uh, Kodesh HaKadoshim and violated it. Dafka Alexander the Great didn't violate anything. You know, the story, he said that they, okay, he says, mask him to everything, but he said, just put a statue up in the, in the base of Middash of me. You know, everywhere I go, there's an Alexandria of Egypt, there's an Alexandria of Syria, Alexandria everywhere, let there be an Alexandria of Jerusalem also. You know, so Shabbat Tzadik had to explain to him that, you know, we don't do statues. But uh, we'll do something else, you know. So, the kids' names, you know, we'll name our kids Alexander. Okay, um, but like, why why was that the cessation of Nevoah? Why would it, if it was just the Tumah, why would it cause the termination of Nevoah? The, 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 so the the uh, short, the, 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 the mature shot that Ramzadik says in Chrysanik and Hanukkah is that uh, let's understand that the paradigm shift that took place on that day at that moment was a paradigm shift from in his language, from Isarusa de la Ela to Isarusa de la Sata. Meaning, for a thousand years, from the time of Moshe Rabbeinu until this moment, when we needed information, we looked up to Shemai. From the time of the Bayesheni from Shimon Atzadik, Ein Zayakim la Hashem Ba'aramus Yadayim, the Gemara says, we don't any longer pick up our hands when we doubt. <laughs> we hold our sitter. The, the, the Siddur is written by the Atshik Nesnado. When we want Chachma, we no longer go to the Navi to get that Chachma. We sit and learn to get the Chachma. Ter Shabal Peh, in its deep shot of Ter Shabal Peh, is parallel with Isarusa de la Sata. Ter Shabal Peh doesn't mean, like, this Ter Shabal Peh, this Ter Shabal Peh, two things, two volumes. Ter Shabal Peh means that which the, the um, human was the ability that the human was given in logic and in reasoning in, in, in depth to be able to understand the Torah through an exegetical code, through hermeneutical codes. These are all Greek words but, um, that we were able to, to bring out um, an MS without a Rav. This was B'diuk, what the Greeks were doing. This was, this was completely Aristotelian, the hermeneutical code. Uh, we have B'yud Gibbald Varm, Shatar and Idresh, what the, what, the, what the Greeks and the, and the Klai had in common was that we were both very much into, um, I'm sure Alexander the Great didn't know these words, but we were very much into Isarusa de la if I want to be cynical, I'm not even sure if Shimon Atzadik knew those words, but the, the concept was there. The Sarusa de Lusato, meaning now with the paradigm shift is it's coming from here. So, Lafid Lashon of Rapsonic, Alexander Le Shimon Hayek Eklipa Lepri. It was all the same thing. Eklipa and Lepri are very closely connected. Not only they're closely connected, but they're, they're, the, the Pri needs a Klipa. Pri needs a Klipa. This was a kiyu of Noach's bracha of Yafta Likim Liyachas V'yishkoin Ba'al Leishem. That Yofi is always the, the chitzoni, unto itself, Yofi, we all know this. Yofi has no value unto itself, just a value for a moment. But when you get to know the Yofi, if there's nothing inside, nothing between the ears, what good is the Yofi? It loses its uh, glamour very, very quickly. Yofi is the klipa. It's wonderful, Shekerachei, the Hevel Ayoyfi. 
Isha Yeras Hashem Hitisalo is what's the, the obik of the inside, the shape. So, Yafta Lekibli Ephes, there's the Ephes, Yofi, Ephes. The Yishkod Bole Shave, another shape, that's, that's us, Kla Yisrael. We're the Shabbites. They hate us, you're anti Shabbat. So, that's the Kli. So, this is the Pre, we're the Pre, and this is the Klipa. So, when, when Alexander Mokta came into the base of Mikdash, what you had over there was not necessarily a bad thing. It was a, a connecting of the Kli to the Pre, to the, to the, to the, to the, the Klipa to the Pre. That's what was taking place. Hence, there was a cessation of Nevoah. It's no longer about Nevoah. It's about now reasoning and figuring it out. And if it wasn't for this moment, there would be no Panovich and no Brisk. <laughs> it, 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 was, it was this moment, there would be no Vilna Gon, there would be no, there would be no it, it was this moment that caused the Yeshiva world, as as we know it, the cause Daf Yomi, as we understand it, the brought the Mishnah, the Shas, it was the, 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 everything that we consider to be uh, Yiddishkeit, except for those that weren't Makabala. And those that weren't Makabala were the Tzedukim and the Baitusim and, the, and, and, the, and later on in history, the Kroyim and the and the Misyav and the Neutzer. <laughs> it was, it was, it was the groups of people that got so stuck on the prophetic aspect of the Torah that they couldn't understand the contribution of Isarusa de la Sata and how we need to, now, you know, let's just go back for a minute, like how we need to make this contribution. Everybody knows that uh, the Gemara says of an office that, that uh, when Hashem told Moshe the Torah, when he taught Moshe the Torah, so every question the Gemara says, Every question that Asid Talmud Lisha Lirabai was told over to Moshe. Like uh, the Shilas of the Talmudim, I don't know if it means little kids or Yeshiva Bach or whatever it was, all the all the Rabarf bears and all the Rab they they were all told over to Moshe with the Kasha, with the Terence. That was the Pshat that, that Moshe Rabbeinu heard the whole Torah Shabalpa. But but at the same time, uh, so that was a Luchash Rishadis. At the same time, when Hashem told him Dor Dor Vidar and he showed him Rabbi Akiva, who was also a father of Tar Shabbat in, in the Mishnaic sense of the word, um, he said, well, I don't even know what he's talking about. As a Moshe Rabbeinu said, I don't even understand what Rabbi Akiva is talking about. Because Moshe Rabbeinu was the father of Tar Shabbat the, the Av Hanavim, the Adon Kol Hanavim. It was a different, a different paradigm than the paradigm that we work today. So this is an extremely um, important, extremely important paradigm shift that took place, and a dangerous one, a scary one. Because now that we've, on the one hand, like there was a hischachus of Tarashim Baal but on the other hand, that had to be accepted, the Chachamim had to be accepted as the Nesiyah Yisrael, which eventually became the Nesiyah Yisrael, Hillel, Gamliel, Shimon ben Gamliel, Gamliel ben Shimon, Riyadon ben Zakkai, or Rekiva. Eventually, they, they had to be accepted as the, having the Messiah of understanding Torah Shebaal Peh. And it was, so on the one hand, like there was a, a beautiful Hishachos of Torah Shebaal Peh, and on the other hand, there was a cessation of Levua, so that stopped a lot of people in their tracks, Jews and Goyim alike, throughout, the, throughout this whole Bayashegi era, from, in other words, from the Misyavdiv and the Tzedukim all the way to the Christians, the early Christians, stopped in their track and say, hold on a second, you know, are, you know, do we need to, like the, like the guys at Kodi Island Avenue, do we need to accept Hillel and Shabbai? Or we have we have a Navua here. So whenever there's a paradigm shift, I mean we've seen it in our own days, whenever the paradigm shift, not everybody uh, is op open enough and smart enough to accept that that shift in the uh, in the paradigm and they get left to the dust to cause a lot of service. <laughs> a lot of service. The first thing that the the Yeshua the Tat that brought two opposites. One is that the Torah of Al and the Tirgum of Torah to which which stops Torah Shabbat Peh. That's what you the regret said. So it's like it brought two that's right. the same period brought right. two opposites that stopped the Torah 
The two of them stop. It's, it's, an, it's like it's a, a, an ironic, two, two, two opposite effects of the same paradigm shift. Yeah. It's two opposite effects of the, because the Torah Shabbat, on the one hand, the Torah Shabbat began to be developed. On the other hand, it was separated out, like Luch HaShtiyah's. It was separated out from the Torah Shabbat staff, so how, now you have a standalone piece called the Old Testament. The, the, the term prevents, the term prevents having Torah Right, right. right. It was the same thing, like like the Lucha Shliyas. Is was that a uh, was that good or bad? Like, it's 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 whenever we have a progression in history, it's always good, but it's always difficult. So it's not bad, but it's difficult. So the, the what what happened with the bias with the with the with the, uh, the kedusha? What happened with the ego? What was the ego? The ego saying we we want to do it. Asalanu, we'll we'll make the. Uh, you know, we'll make the God, we'll do the interpreting. Okay, so, for you guys. Meaning, it's not, it's no longer being handed to us on a, on a golden platter. Is that good, is it bad? It is. <laughs> I'll tell you one thing, um, besides for not having a Panovich and a brisk today, but besides for that, like, what would we be, what would be our Geshmak in Yiddishkeit if we had to just be Bechabal, after Chapich HaVavalei? That, that today the clee for Tyra is the is the is the person who could question, the person who could who can challenge those those givens. But is that dangerous? Of course, of course, it's dangerous. And the Jews have gone you know haywire with this thing. Like that. it seems like in the language of the Sado, but you, this was the danger that the others who didn't not recover could fall into is that it could appear like a Eureka. If that was all. That was that. Now it's fading out, and now it's a Eureka that didn't, that wasn't successful, and we need and we need a new derech. On the other, in the language of Tzadok, in order for the Rishimah Tzadok, Tzadok and the and the Yivanim to partner in the Tzadok Kedusha, there's a level of commonality reaching down to a lower level, like when you're on Hanukkah. The lift is below ten twach. But that ultimately is the beginning of a new Yeshua. Right. And it's Which so the new beginnings agree. And, and new beginnings are difficult for people. I, I, I think that let's think together for a second. Like what actually happened on Hanukkah in this in this pro, in this process. Hanukkah historically is before this, before Alexander the Great, right? Before he came. No, in. much later. It's later. Much later. Yeah, that was um, that know. was forty-five years. Uh, Shimon Tzadik was forty-five years approximately after the building of the Bayis Shem. And this was a couple hundred years later, because this was two hundred years. Hanukkah story was two hundred years before the Korban, basically, which question how long the Bayis Shem he was exactly, but. Um, you're talking. You're about to talk about a span of a hundred. During those couple of hundred years, there was two forces um, being developed. Very strong forces. The force of the the force of of the, of the tzedukim were saying, "Hey, wait a minute. These guys are getting carried away." Torah Shabbat Pet, and the force of Klai Yisrael, which was developing Torah Shabbat Pet, and was full of Tanoim, and led to Amoraim and Rishonim and Afrinim, and led to a Rambam. So there's really two forces. There's a, a really um, important, I think, an important understanding of what uh, Judaism is, uh, as we know, which the Christians like to call rabbinic Judaism. But uh, of course, it's rabbinic Judaism. But it's not. That's a silly way of saying it. It's it's a it's a no, nobody's doing in terms of doing anything other than be mukai the mitzvahs, tariyag mitzvahs of the Torah. I have a son, Alexander. His name's Alexander Ziskin. So I remember at, at his bris, I pointed out that. Uh, Alexander Ziskin is Gematria Rabach Shasa. Taryag, the Taryag Mitzvahs. You know, two not Jewish, <laughs> two not Jewish names. But uh, like this, this was a. Um, there's, there's nothing. There's nothing that anybody wants to do differently. The Machlekes and through the generations, and I'm not a political person. I'm getting over like how much Derech Eretz, how much Mata, how much. I'm not. You know, whatever. You know, like. Okay. Exactly how you balance this this whole piece and they slash they slash them. I mean, one thing is for sure that the guy knew it all, and one thing is for sure that the Tanoim knew it all, and and and, and as did the Amoraim, as did the Rambam, uh, like they knew it all. So it could be that when we were under siege, 
you know, from from the uh, from the Goyim to so it, that that was a different that was a different story. I was thinking like, so let's let's get back to the Hanukkah. So Hanukkah is kind of the end of towards you know Neil going towards the end of that time, approaching the end of the Greek era and getting into the Roman era. Don't forget that a couple of hundred years in Jewish history is kid stuff. You know, it's not a significant. It's interesting. The rest is gone. Hmm? It's only the rabbinic Judaism that still exists today. It's Christianity, which is not Judaism. I don't think that's what we consider. The point is, anybody, any, what the point you're making is that anybody that has not embraced um, rabbinic Judaism is no longer Jewish. But, by the way, it's not just Christians. Uh, the Reform movement, conservative movement. Uh, this, this, this was all. What's the difference, really? I mean, it's it's all a. Uh, it's not by accident that the Baskilim, you know, all like just focused so, so so seriously on Tanakh. So the reaction was a bad one. The reaction was that we don't even know Tanakh, which is so rich in the, to, to to understanding Yiddishkeit. Like understanding Yiddishkeit. In my, you know, as I get older, I'm I'm really wanting to understand like. Like the essence of Yiddishkeit, like like what does it what does it really mean? You only have one life to do this, so far. Like understand, like what does it really mean? Besides, your, uh, every Tosfos goes into this. I'm not I'm not talking about not learning to tell you, but it, like what is it really all about? What does it really mean? You know, it, it's you, you can't <coughs> understand the essence. You cannot understand the essence of Yiddishkeit. I've learned if you don't if you don't know and understand Tanakh clearly. But the problem with that was it was the domain of the Baskilim and the domain of the Tzedukim. Before them, that's what we need to understand. That it was the domain of those that that uh, Tirgaba, the Tirgaba Terli Yavanis was exactly this, <laughs> was exactly this. So, so the Misyavnim at that time that went for us basically became reform guys. You know, some kind of a, some kind of a, a you know, I don't know what they would be called today, but it's not nothing new. You know? There's no, there's no chiddush in, in, in any of this. Altogether, history repeating itself. You know, like everyone talks about the the, the, the Tzedukim, uh, the Prusha, we're the Prusha. You know, uh, the, the, the New Testament, the Habdil, you know, uh, talks about us like we're really ugly and, and, and really bad. Uh, the New Testament's a book about hypocrisy. You know, uh, okay, some of, it, <laughs> some, of it, some of it true, some of it wasn't. No reason to make a new religion. Uh, you know, like I, always tell, I always tell people the shul, like, if you don't like something, so let's try to fix it. You know, have to go, like another shul, <laughs> you know, to go, go, let's try to fix it. Like, if there's, that's, that's what it needs to be uh, a klal and a kahila. Let's try to work, up, we'll, let's try to fix it out. You know, you know, if you get angry at your wife, you don't leave. There's, there's, so these, these are people that, for whatever reasons, all bad reasons, I would say, um, you know, kind of left. You know, complaints might have been legitimate, but they kind of left, you know, throughout the generations. The, the Hanukkah, I just want to say this before in the next three minutes, that um, if, if, if you're responded to the um, Alanism, for instance, so let's look at Alanism for a second. We got a lot of things happening over here. Thank you. So it means clearly the Torah Shabbat. I mean, here they were at the same thing, but they were the klipa. <laughs> they were the same thing. We're we're coming up with the chachma. We're doing the balchus. Well, we're doing the balchus. Balchus is all about balchus. It's all come come groundswell of Torah. Ashkicham Torah But this says, uh, Masarta, just two points I want to bring out. Masarta gi boirim biyat chaloshim. Move on. In terms of, let's say, Mohammed's, um, they were gi boirim, we were weak, we won. Rabim biyat ma'atu. Move on. Tameim biyat tahir. Move on. But okay. Like they were Tameim. We were, what's the Ness exactly? But I'm not sure what the Ness was. But they were Tameim, we were Tahar. The way I understand it is that, generally speaking, there's two kochos in the world. There's a kochah tumah and there's a kochah tara. And the kochah tumah is actually a stronger force. Uh, a stronger, in the sense, a more aggressive force. But, like, 
somebody wants to do an Avera, does, does anybody have that, that same degree of cheshek when they want to do a mitzvah? Like, like you know, a person gets into an Avera, like you're drunk with the, like you're drunk with the Avera, whatever, whatever the Avera it is, whether it's the like Lashon Har or Arias or Achila. Uh, you know, how many people feel that way about getting up to her davening? And then, you know, you're going to have nuts, put in my tefillin. So there's, there's a, there's a, the Koach HaTumma is a stronger, a more aggressive Koach than the Koach HaTara. And nevertheless, it was Tmei Biyat Tahirim. Rishoyim Biyat Sadikim, similar. What's the Zaydim Biyat Oiske Sarasecha? Who are Zaydim? You think? Break the Raya. The Hellenists. How do you know? What? Okay, so first of all, we're talking about Jews. Yeah. Okay. Not Yvonne. Amazing. 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 But they held, the, the Sadukim at the time of the Bayashani held that you have to be Tahar to bring to, to do the Avoida of Paraduma. Lafikha, <coughs> what was our reaction? How you based in the Bayashani Metamina Sakain. So we would go Badafka to be Metamina Sakain, lay down, we'd say to the coin, we put a sharitz on his stomach, that's what they did. Hasayrif is a bar b'sheretz. Different, there were different uh, systems of being matama kite, which is a big chiddush. Kite is not allowed to. You go to a basic bar, so but we would be matama the kite. The toivol, and then the toivol v'achach oisik ba k'de levatel divrei elu hazedim. In order to be levatel the zedim. Shmak, right? Shemayrim. So the, the, these, these were calls, as the Rambam, as before the Rambam, that the, the Zaydim were those, was a catch-all phrase for those that are koifer in Tarr Shabbat Pet. So Zaydim biyad oiske sarasecha, that's the tight here. Zaydim biyad oiske sarasecha, whether they were Yevonim or whether they were Rasyavnim, or whether they were Tzedukim or whether they were Batusim, it doesn't really make that much of a difference because there's always Zaydim around, or whether there's Groyim, or whatever, whatever sect it is, which is, which they are sects. Meaning, you know, as much as they, at times in history, even now at this time, they, they represent a large number, it's just a trend. It's a trend that's always been there on the side of Klai Yisrael, and they come and they go and they come and they go. The, the, the constant in Klai Yisrael has always been. The Oiske Sarasacha, that's the ones that, uh, that their, their children stick with it, and their grandchildren stick with it, and those are the ones that marry Jews, etc. Um, are the Oiske Sarasacha very, very hard to find? It's almost a, you know, a, a, a rub in America for, for, um, you know, for, some, for all those years. I remember if somebody called up and said, my son is just getting married in the, in the outside of the firm world, it was, the automatic assumption was that it was a non-Jew. Wasn't like you don't even ask. I didn't like it. If I ask anyone, I have the the Agmas Nefesh. It's it, it, it's a, it was like a, that was that was that's the default uh, situation because that's Zaydim. That's the that's the Zaydim. It doesn't work and it doesn't last. So it's a, a sect. So the, the the part of the Hanukkah story was the Zaydim beyond Oiske Sarasecha. It could be that um, if the Menaira is the Shiva Kanya Menaira, or like the guide says. <coughs> At the Grads and the Zayar, even that the Shiva Kane Amanera were the Shiva Kane Achasma. And, and the Hadlaka, so this was all like some very deep stuff that was going on here. That, that, that the Ness of Hanukkah, 
the nest of Hanukkah, the real nest of Hanukkah, was that, look, we lit this menorah, right? Mitzvah B'Shochah. We lit this menorah, and the menorah works. The menorah lasted and had divine um, intervention and divine haskama. We lit this menorah, but it, the, it, it comes from us. It comes from us. It's not that we went in there and poof, there was a burning bush. It, it, we lit the menorah, and it took. It lasted. It worked. There was a cubus. There was a there was an eternity to to what we did. There was a miracle to what we did. So this was really the nest of Hanukkah was symbolic of the Zaydin Biyadois Kesarasecha. It was symbolic of the fact that the, that that there is Yesh Mashahu in our contribution. Do you realize, by the way, just as a closing uh, irony, uh, it's how ironic all of this is, because you would think that the more um, secular uh, of the of the world would, would be the ones that are are machshiv more the the human contribution, and that's not the way it was in history. It was fell with your human contribution. We 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 want prophecy. We want it now. It, it, it was so it was such a, a, an ironic twist that the secular were the ones that were like seriously into God and it was and it was the Hashmanai, which I dare say might have even caused them in fact to become secular eventually the the, the Hashmanai era but at the time the kedusha just get if you can get this right you know this idea of Isarusa de Lasata and how it's our Contribution and our amelus, which is bringing out the Dvar Hashem, which is the which is the Shiva Neiros, in our case the Shvar Neiros of, of the Hanukkah candle. Then you, you you struck you struck gold. Then you struck the balance of of the Zayd Biyad Oiske Sarasach, and you have the Nes Hanukkah, the Or of Hanukkah, when the when the irony is 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 equalized, and we have the exact right balance. So it's a process that started with Alexander the Great walking in. And going too far to the left and too far to the right, and this mach like is that mach like is until Hanukkah just came together exactly right. We do it like our Rakhine. We light it, and, and then it, and then Hashem lights. Hashem takes it over from there, and and it keeps lit. I can think that Hanukkah that started by the, the human is right? That the Chassid Sofer says on Hanukkah is a kiyum de rice in Hanukkah. That's you're able to bring it back up to such a high kiyum, even though we're the ones who. That's why we said the halal. The very first was the halal, to the highest level. Highest level. But thanks for listening. We'll get back to.